There we go. And so we can go through all of Romans 8, and you'll, you'll see how we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Right? Romans chapter 8. I'm just referring to the entire chapter. You can look it over, right? But there's certain things I want to bring your attention to, and specifically verse 2. Look at verse 2. So the law of the spirit of life has set you free, right? What's the condition? What's the condition in the scripture? Through Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, right? Has set you free from what? The law of sin and death. So here we have... You know, we have natural laws, right? We have the law of gravity. We have the law of aerodynamics. Um, we have different laws. And certain laws supersede other laws, right? So it's, it's very easy. It's very simple to see that the law of spirit always beats the law of, of sin and death. Yeah. All right, you can have a seat. That's good. So I want to make sure everybody's awake. <laughs> so uh, yesterday I started to touch a little bit. Wow, nice spotlight. <laughs> I started. I started to touch a little bit on Acts 1-8, right? And so we're going to go back to Acts 1-8, and we're really going to kind of drive it home for the next 30 minutes, okay? So Acts 1-8, even if we go back to, yeah, it's just Acts 1-8 is fun. So I'm reading from the ESV, and it says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Right? So I've heard this preached, and maybe you have also, that it's the power that allows you to be a witness. Right? And, but if we actually break down the sentence, <clears throat> we look at the subject, we see that it's the Holy Spirit that allows us to be a witness. It's not the power. Okay? Because, you know, we see in the Old Testament, it says, not by power, not by my, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Right? And then, in the New Testament, it almost seems like it contradicts, but Paul says, our faith does not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Right? So it's, it's actually comparing two different things. Because when you look at what, what, what um, is written here in Acts 1.8, what Jesus is saying is that the, the very power, the essence of his nature comes when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Is, do you know what I mean? Yes? You understand? Right? So let's go over to Acts. Uh, not Acts. Sorry. Romans 8. Real quick. Romans 8. Yeah. So it's, it's very important that you begin to solidify this in yourself. Do you have the Spirit of God? Yes. If anybody doesn't, we can pray for them. Okay. <laughs> We can lay hands. But if you have the Spirit of God abiding in you, then anywhere you go, you, you overcome, you free anybody who's in bondage. Anybody who is under the law of sin and death. You understand? So what does that require on your part? Uh, 
It, yes, they believe it. <clears throat> oh, oh, yes, we're talking about having the Holy Spirit. <laughs> no, not, well, yes, knowledge, it starts off with knowledge. But you have to preach the gospel, right? It says you, you, you if we go to Luke 4, right, 19... Was it 1920, 18, 19, somewhere in there? Right, 18, 19? Where it says to proclaim, to preach, to herald is the Greek word. So we have to proclaim the good news to people so that they can hear it. And so if we go to, you know, Romans 10, the very end of 10, we can skip over there real quick. We'll come back to 8. So put your, leave your finger on 8. And it says that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, right? Seventeen. Yep. So all of, if you know, obviously, if all it was is hearing, 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 then the church would be full of faith. But that's not the case. So what is it that we're missing? is that they should hear about Jesus Christ and get trust in Jesus. See, there's a difference. It's A lot of what's going on in churches today is put trust in the knowledge. What is that? The wisdom of men. You see what I'm saying? So one of the, the big issues with a lot of ministries is they deliver a lot of knowledge. But if you don't mix that with understanding, it never becomes godly wisdom. Right? What does Colossians 1 say? He's, he's saying, I pray that you have knowledge, spiritual understanding. Right? I think it's uh, verse 19, 17, 19, somewhere in there. And... It's, it's very important that you understand that it's got to be mixed with understanding. If it's not mixed with understanding, then all it is is knowledge. And all knowledge does is puff up. Right? So, um, just a quick story. There was a, a gentleman, he called me, he was part of a, another ministry. And he was like, I've been following you on Facebook. I, I've seen basically your testimonies and what people have been posting and everything. And it's, it's awesome. Oh, what, what changed? I knew you were with this other ministry. What changed? And I was like, honestly, I just started focusing on the nature of God. He goes, well, I heard, the, I heard this one training. You know, I don't want to list any names. <laughs> I heard this one training, and it messed me up. I couldn't go back to my church. I stopped going to church, and I joined the church online. And... When I was a part of the other ministry, I would have said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. But I told them, I was like, oh, so you're, you're admitting that you're spiritually immature. He's like, what do you mean? I go, yeah, you're telling me that you're spiritually immature. Because everything you just said was, I, 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 I. I want to be around like-minded believers. I want to do this. I want to. Oh, so your security isn't in Jesus Christ. Your security is in like-minded believers. You see what I'm saying? And so I said, the very nature of God says that, let's look at 1 Corinthians 13, right? Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not self-seeking. Love is not rude, right? It enlists all these characteristics of love, of unconditional love. And I said, so if you have the very nature of God, then why are you not being patient with your church? Because the only thing that needs to switch in your own mind is that you're not there to receive anymore. You're there to give. Right? And he was like, oh my gosh. I go, what's happened to you? And it's what's happened to a lot of us um, that have left certain ministries is we were so puffed up with the knowledge that we thought we knew better than everybody else. But as we've gone out and we've ministered with other ministries and stuff, realize 
they believe the same thing in a different way, get the same results. So it's not about the, just having head knowledge. It's about relationship and understanding. Because, you know, there's people that have doctrines that are way off. William Burnham, right? His doctrine was just poop. It was. He, he hated women. Hated women. Right? As far as prophecy, accurate. Word of knowledge, accurate. Tell you where you live, your address, what you wore yesterday. Tell you everything. Conversations you had. Right? But when it came down to teaching doctrine, no, throw it away. It's no good. Completely tainted by his own perception. So a lot of the people, or well, what you see with God mainly, and you have to understand this, God honors faith. People will have wrong doctrines everywhere you go. And if you think it's your job to always be correcting them, you become a Pharisee. Right? Because you're straining to make them understand, well, no, 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 you're thinking wrong. You're doing this wrong. No, no, no. Instead, it should be done out of love. They should see the love of God spread abroad in your own heart and love them through it. That's unconditional love. There's no conditions to it. You're not trying to come and say, no, no, you did this wrong, this wrong. Then what are you doing? You're condemning. Right? What if, you, what if I come, like, let's say Anthony gives me permission to speak into his life and I say, brother, how, how would you like, I'm going to show you two different approaches, okay? No, that's, that's the wrong doctrine. No, 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 you're just completely wrong. Oh, I don't even know where to start with you, right? Would you like that or would you say, no, brother, no. You see, let me show you a better way. And then I take him to scripture. Which one would you prefer? The second, right? And so a lot of times we want to get hyper-focused on trying to correct other people. I was there. I can tell you. I was there. But we, we missed out the very character and the very nature of God of just being completely loving. We have to love people. And that comes through the Holy Spirit. Right? Because how do we know how to love because God first demonstrated to us love. Right? He first loved us. So he demonstrated. Did he, like, attack everybody all the time? Jesus? Excuse me. Jesus? No? He didn't? Who did he attack? Who? Pharisees. Okay. Why did he attack them? Let me ask you this question. I'm going to get you to think again, okay? So if God is, we, we, we mentioned 1 Corinthians 13. So if God is love, right? Keeps no record of wrongs. Why did he attack the Pharisees? Yeah, why did Jesus attack the Pharisees? Because Jesus is the exact imprint of God's nature. Because they were misleading people? Okay. Self-righteous? Okay, we're getting closer. Okay. They are representing a false image of God. They are presenting a false image of God. Um, they were not ready to be corrected by love. They were not what? Ready. They were not ready to accept correction by love. You, they weren't ready to receive correction by love? What do you call that? Pride. Pride. Throughout the Old Testament, you see that, that God hates the pride in people. Right? Oh, too much light. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. 
It says that, that God humbles the proud, but exalts the humble. Right? Why do you think James says, humble yourselves before God? Right? Because there's two things you're going to do. You're either going to exalt yourself through pride. What does God have to do? Humble you. Or if you humble yourself, he exalts you. It's a paradox. Right? So when you begin to see the very nature of God in his heart, in the spirit of God, and producing fruit in your life, then you don't feel like I have to run to correct this person or correct that person. That's not your job. That's the Holy Spirit's job. So there's, there's a quote that says, Preach Jesus and use words if you must. That's for believers. Okay? Now understand, if you are over a congregation or, or something like that, then you have the right. You're responsible for your, for your sheep. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? So it's completely different when somebody gives you the right to speak into their life. I have people that, that tell me, you have the right to speak into my life. So when I see something, I take them aside. I said, um, I ask them questions. At first, and I'm still having to push a lot of this junk out, you know, <laughs> be washed by the word. But at first, and Daisy helps me, she's like, ask them questions. And I'm like, don't just accuse. Okay. So I go back and I start asking them questions. What were you thinking when you did this? Why did, why did you do this? Right? Start asking them questions so I can understand their heart. Because nobody likes being called into the, the principal's office. Right? You get into trouble? You call, they call you into the boss's office? <laughs> Shake a little bit, right? <laughs> what did I do? I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> and, and, but whenever you start having conversation, that's why with God, it's all about relationship. Think about it. If God had zero tolerance for your wrong doctrine, where would you be right now? Where would you be? You'd be in the same place in the gutter because he didn't care. Because he didn't love you. So people need to see your heart for them. They need to see that you love them completely and unconditionally. Even if they're wrong. It might be the right time to correct. It might not be the right time to correct. That's why a relationship's so important. So a lot of people, they, they, they come up to me and they ask, well, Anthony, like, how do you know when is the right time to correct? I was like, well, what we learn very, very quickly is it just depends on the situation. That's why relationship with the Holy Spirit is so important. Because then you, you get to know how he flows, right? So let's say, you know, um, Castro does something wrong. Would it be okay with me? This is just some guidelines, okay? Would it be okay with me to rebuke him in front of you all? No. Why? Okay. What's another reason? It will be hard for him to judge, and other people will judge when you correct yourself. That's good. What else? He will shut the door. I would shame him. I'm not here to shame him. I'm here to build him up. Right? So it's better for me to go aside with him and say, hey, you know, when you said this, I, I didn't appreciate that, you know. Um, I think you could have said it this way. Right? Wouldn't you appreciate that better? Yeah. And it's honoring. Because if, if it was me, I would want you to do that to me. Now, in a different situation, let's say, you know, Castro stands up and he's like, no, you're wrong. Right? In the middle of a service. Okay? So what do you do then? Huh? He's putting himself out there already. So what do you do? 
You confront it. Okay. 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 So there's there's different ways you can go about it, but if you listen to what I said, you you ask the spirit of God. You know, witches will hide in services. I'm telling you because you're trainers. Okay, witches will hide in services, and they will say hallelujah. Been in services, it's happened. They will say hallelujah, but you'll feel it in your spirit like chalk and somebody dragging their fingernails over a chalkboard. You know how it's like the screeching sound? And that's how it starts to feel on your on your on your spirit. I'm telling you, because I've I've been around it. And so this one lady, she was walking through a healing line, and she's like, Hallelujah. She's like saying it real loud. And people are looking at her, and they're, they're like, oh, that's, that's cool, you know. And they got to a guy, and he's like, he goes, something's wrong. I go, yeah, she's got a devil casted out of her. And because I'm there, like, trying to orchestrate and keep everybody in line and do different things. I go, just, just cast a demon out of her. It's, it's very simple. He's like, what? I go, he's like, she's on the ground. He goes, because she came up to him. He touched her. She fell out. But she's still screaming hallelujah. So she wasn't really falling out. She was playing possum. What devils do. Right? <clears throat> you understand the term playing possum? Pretending they're dead? Right? So what demons do with people is they will fall to the ground so you move on. You don't actually spend time casting the demon out. But the demon's stupid because now he's pinned to the ground. Where's he going to go? Right? You just follow him to the ground. You put your hand on him. Say, right now, in the name of Jesus, devil, come out. And that's it. And then you can get up and walk off. Right? So when you start <clears throat> realizing this and how simple it is, how easy this is, and the nature of God that's in you, what, did, what do you think Jesus rebuked the sons of thunder? We talked about this yesterday a little bit. Because they didn't recognize what kingdom they're from. And so, that's why I'm telling you, we need to love. They need to know us by our love for one another. But we need to love. Okay? So, uh, Lester Sumrall, he was in Australia. And he was traveling with Howard Carter. You you heard this story before? Yes, no, maybe so? No? (laughs) So Howard Carter, he's, he's preaching. I mean, uh, Lester Summer was preaching after Howard Carter. Howard Carter would teach in the morning. Lester Summer would preach in the evenings. Right? So Lester Summer was preaching. And he said, this one lady sitting on the front row started slivering off her snake. I mean, off her, her chair, chair like a snake onto the ground. And he says, it was distracting. So he said, get up and sit down. So she gets up and she sits back down. So he keeps preaching. Next thing you know, she starts slivering like a snake back onto the ground again. And he's like, devil, come out of her. The devil came out of her. He said, sit down. She sat down. Didn't happen ever again. So he gets back and everybody's like, oh, right? What just happened? And so he gets there and he's like, Brother Howard, I, I think... I think I really blew it. He's like, why? So he explained the situation to him. He goes, no, no, I would have done the same thing. Really? Yeah, yeah, that was the devil. He cast it out of him. It was very simple. Didn't didn't pay attention to it anymore, you know? And um, he's like, okay. So next meeting, Lester Summer was teaching. This lady kept saying, Hallelujah. And he said it, it, it was striking against his spirit. And he was like, something wrong here. Right? So she said it several times, and it kept rubbing against him wrong. And he decided to call her out. It's a middle of a service. Right? And so 
She gets up. She says, hallelujah again. He said, devil, come out of her. She falls down. She starts foaming at the mouth and everything. Right? And so that night, he goes, Brother Howard. He's like, Brother Howard, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I really think I messed up. I think, I think you're going to kick me out for sure now. He's like, why? He's like, because this Christian woman, she kept saying hallelujah, but just I didn't feel right. Didn't feel right. So I cast a demon out of her. He's like, well, what happened? She fell to the floor, and the demon came out of her. Yeah, yeah I would have done the same thing. I was like, what is this? He's like, it's discerning of spirit. You're operating. So it's, it's very important that we understand that a lot of what's going on is determined on two things. Because like I said, once you know God's will, the narrow way becomes the wide way. Because you're now in Christ. Christ is the narrow way. But once you're in Christ, you have a broad way. Okay? So you have God's will, but if, if you're in Christ, you're in God's will. Okay, I'm saying this very generally, very generally. And you can decide how to act in God's will. Like I said, I can choose to heal you by putting my pinky in water, or wiping my foot on the ground, or taking my, my, my shirt and throwing it over you, or, or whatever. It, it doesn't matter. The method is not sacred, only the message. The, the belief that you have. If you think that, you know, throwing a jacket on somebody or something like that is, is like, who does it glorify? That's the question you need to ask. Who does it glorify? Does it glorify a man or does it glorify God? That's things we need to pay attention to. So just going back to the Holy Spirit, let me give you a principle that you probably you need to write this down because it, 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 when I started um, talking to God about it, this will help change a lot for me. Right? And it's basically, if you see the power in no fruit of the Spirit, Run. If you see the power and no fruit of the Spirit, run. Because it's not God. Okay? So let's, let's talk about this. A lot of people, especially with, I can tell you specifically about, um, let me just put this down so I can talk with my hands. <laughs> So, specifically, about revivals that have happened in North America. You have the Toronto Blessing, you heard about that, Lakeland, Outpouring, you heard about that, Brownsville, never heard of any of these revivals. Okay. So, basically, if you go back and you look them up, you'll see the one in Toronto, it, went, it started off as a move of God. People just started showing up and giving their lives to Christ out of nowhere, conviction in their heart, they're driving by the church, they would stop and go into the church and, and give their lives wholeheartedly to Christ. But it went into excess because they accepted everything that was going on in the church as the Spirit of God. So listen to what I'm saying. The next thing you know, they have spiritual animals. Oh, I'm walking my spiritual lion. Oh, lion. Yeah. Yeah. I have a spiritual tiger right here. And they're like petting and doing all kinds of stuff. I was like, you lost it. You don't find that anywhere in scripture. Why do you need a spiritual animal? Right? So it's it's very important that you begin to see how does this line up to the fruit of the spirit, right? So there was there was people they were saying they would start howling and calling like a bird or you know, doing all these different things. And they're like, oh, that's, that's God. That's a manifestation of, of His Spirit. Who are you to say that's not a manifestation of His Spirit? His Word. His Word tells me that. Right? It says, doesn't it say the Spirit of the Prophet is subject to the Prophet? Doesn't it say that the fruit of the Spirit is self-control? So you start to see things 
that are very interesting. So people, they start reacting to the Spirit of God in you, right? Because, understand, the Holy Spirit lives inside you. And the more time that you spend getting to know Him and walking with Him and everything, you become insulated. So some people, they're like, oh, you know, the Spirit of God, like, I, I just felt the Spirit of God. And you're like, I ain't felt nothing. It's not about a sense, right? It's not about a feeling. Because, let me clarify that a little bit. We, we, we went to a church where everybody was always falling down and everything else. They prayed for us. I'm just standing there. I was, come on. <laughs> right? And they, I would never fall down. Because I was like, if it's going to be God, it's going to be God. And not because they're like trying to shove me down with their hands. Which they do. Right? So there's a funny video you can watch on YouTube called... Christian self-defense, right? <laughs> okay, you gotta watch it, it's hilarious, right? It shows how they try to put the hand on the head and push them back and then pull their waist forward so they'll fall, fall down. Oh, okay. And he says, praise the way, praise the way. <laughs> so you still look spiritual, you know, and you're defending yourself. <laughs> and so it's, it's very funny, it's really funny. But 